Good morning, church. It's Saturday. And take your Bibles and go back to Matthew 13 as we look at the final uh, parable that Jesus gave concerning uh, the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. And it's about the dragnet going out, catching a bunch of fish, and then there's going to be a separation of the fish that's going to happen. So let me just kind of get into it. We read it yesterday. Read it again. You can read it from verse 47 down through verse number 50. Let me just explain what's going on, and then we'll talk more about some of it uh, on Monday. First of all, uh, fishing was a common occupation in that time. In fact, Jesus went fishing uh, with the uh, disciples. Uh, for the disciples, that was their profession, if you will. That's how they made their living. And they would oftentimes fish, and there were three kind of ways of fishing that are mentioned in the Bible. You, you'll find different ways. One was cast a hook. Remember, Peter went and cast a hook and caught a fish and took a coin out of its mouth and, and paid money for it. So that, that's one way. Another was a one-man net. That's where you would go out and you would stand about waist-deep in water, and you would cast the net out, and then you would drag it in, and you might catch one or two fish. But then there was what is called a... A sagin or sane is what we call it today, a large net. And it would be stretched between two boats. And they would catch large amounts of fish. And we, we saw on one occasion Jesus' disciples caught 153 fish on just one casting of the net. And so they would drag that net up to the uh, shore. And so there was the catching of the fish. And, and notice it says, that there were some of every kind. And, and that word for every kind is genios or genos. And it, it means of every race or family, every kind of people in the earth. And we've already mentioned that the sea where the net was cast usually represents the Gentiles. The land represents Israel. So there's going to be this great if you will, reaping or harvest of pulling in of all the fish uh, out of the sea. And then there's the culling of the fish. It says that they sat down and they took and they put the good fish into one vessel and they put the bad fish into another and threw them away. Now, he then explains that parable. Okay, that's pretty simple, right? It means there's going to be a time when everybody's going to be brought before God and they're going to be separated. Good and the bad are going to be separated. Well, there's a little more to it than that. Notice, first of all, in verse 41. Now, we didn't read that yesterday because that's a part of another parable of the, the wheat and the tares. But in verse 41, it says, The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out the wheat and the tare. Then look at verse 49. In verse 49, so it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come forth they will separate the wicked uh, from the just. And so God is going to send forth his angels into the world. They're going to pull in everybody from every, the four corners of the world. And there's going to be a great separation of the good from the evil. Now, during this dispensation of time that you and I live in, angels are active, but we, don't, we rarely get to see their activity. They're at work, but it's behind the scenes. Because right now, God is working through His Holy Spirit in the church. And so the angels, though active, have a, a secondary part. But in the days of Jesus, and, and particularly in the tribulation period, when you read about the seven-year tribulation period, angels are mentioned all the time, and they're going to be a part of the eternal kingdom. But at this point... Uh, at the end of the age, the angels are going to take up again the mantle of ministry that Christ wants them to, and that is pulling in all these uh, people. They gather the humans, and then they grade the humans, good or bad, and they cast the, the, the good into a place where they can be useful, and then he takes the bad, and he says he throws them away. But I want you to notice the anguish of the lost. And we're going to talk about this more uh, on Monday. But he says, And he cast them into the furnace of fire, and there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Now he mentions that also when he talks about the wheat and the tares. The wheat are taken into the barn. And so again, they're useful. It's, it's, it's a good harvest, and that's what God wants. 
but then the, the tares are cast into the fire. I'm going to talk more about that. I think we all know what that means. But I want to talk about that more intently uh, on Monday. And so the kingdom parables leads us to this last day's time when everybody's going to be gathered before Christ by the angels. There's going to be a great separation. Those that are going to go into the kingdom are the wheat. They're the seed that fell among the good soil. There's those who didn't get caught up in the leaven. And they didn't get caught up in the cultic type things. They're the good and that the bad are going to be cast away. Well, let's pray together. Father, we thank you again that you've not left us in the dark concerning these things, that there's a great day of judgment coming. And we pray, Father, that you'll help us to be prepared for that day because we know that the only way that we can withstand your wrath and the judgment that is to come is to know your Son as our Savior. We thank you for what Jesus did to provide for our salvation. Now, as we go forth as your representatives, help us to do the work that needs to be done, not to depend upon angels or others to do it in this dispensation time, but the, by, by, by the aid of your Holy Spirit, help us to be your witnesses. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.